everybody, and welcome to lesson 1.1, What is Environmental Science? The content in this video is aligned to the third edition of Environmental Science for AP and covers information from College Board Science Practice 1. Before we begin a detailed look at the information associated with environmental science, it is important that we understand what environmental science actually is. We're going to do this by looking at environmental concepts and discussing how humans impact systems in general terms. This leads us to the content objective of understanding that explaining environmental concepts, processes, and models presented in written format is important to understand environmental science. And when humans use natural resources, they alter natural systems. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define environmental science, compare and contrast environmental science, environmental studies, and environmentalism, identify disciplines associated with environmental science, describe how models can be used to explore problems related to environmental science, identify components of an environmental model, identify major ways humans impact the environment, and explain the difference between saving the planet and saving our society. Which leads us to being able to answer the guiding question of how do we apply environmental science? Environmental science is, in simplest terms, the study of how human beings interact with and influence our world through natural and unnatural processes. It is one of the most prolific interdisciplinary branches of science, meaning that it functions by incorporating the work, theories, models, and practices of a variety of science and non-science disciplines. For example, economists often work with ecologists to understand the ways in which the natural world can perform services for human society, such as filtering water naturally through a wetland, and how much money in artificial services, such as wastewater treatment, that could save a town, state, or even a nation. This can then be parlayed into political action and legislation. The focus is very clearly on the ways in which human beings interact with and affect the natural world. It is not a science like chemistry, in which focus is often on understanding the chemical components of an object or an event without connection to larger natural or human consequences. However, just like any other science, environmental science must have useful, valid, and reliable data with which to work. This data can come directly from environmental scientists and their observations, experiments, and develop of theoretical models and predictions, or it can come from collaboration with other disciplines. The more interdisciplinary and varied the points of data are, the more likely that the conclusions drawn from them are valid and actionable. Lastly, environmental science is heavily involved in and influences a variety of decisions that impact you and I on a day-to-day -day level. Environmental scientists and their results can influence economic policies and proposals, political action or inaction, and the ways in which natural and artificial resources are distributed. Because of the ways in which environmental science and its conclusions can be used to influence economic and political policy, it is sometimes conflated or confused with environmentalism. Environmentalism is a political stance and movement that seeks to create change and focus political actions on environmental issues such as conservation, global climate change, and poverty due to drought. The two, however, are not mutually exclusive. An individual can be both an environmental scientist and an environmentalist. The difference, however, is the focus on objective data and the practice of conclusion making based on that data. Because environmentalism functions as an ideology and a philosophy, it is much more likely to be manipulated or twisted to suit particular political or social gains. Environmental science, and to an extent environmental studies, focuses on understanding the world and our place in it through a more academic and scientific lens. 
Lastly, environmental scientists often work closely with those involved in environmental studies, which addresses the issues and data brought about through observation and experimentation and focuses that information on providing solutions to human generated problems. What does it mean to be interdisciplinary? Put simply, it means that the area of study combines data, ideas, ways of thinking and knowing, theories, and models from a variety of academic disciplines in order to study and understand a particular problem or area of interest. The use of interdisciplinary practice makes it much more likely that a variety of ideas and components of a problem can be addressed, which can lead to more effective and practical solutions to those problems. For example, environmental scientists may be exploring issues related to coral bleaching and the loss of the Great Barrier Reef off the coast of Australia. From a biological perspective, it is easy to see that the organisms that make up the symbiotic coral have been damaged due to a condition in the water that is out of their zone of tolerance. While this is useful, it is not the whole picture. Chemical tests of the water could show that there is an imbalance of certain ions or the introduction of chemicals to the water that makes it unable to support the coral. It might be an excess of hydrogen ions, which leads to a more acidic pH. Chemically, we can understand that this process can occur when excess carbon dioxide dissolves into water. At this point, we understand that the chemical process of ocean acidification is occurring. We know it has a biological impact. We can now explore causes of excessive carbon dioxide in the water by looking at the global and local weather patterns and climate trends. Excessive carbon dioxide often comes from the burning of fossil fuels, which are cheap, readily available, and provide lots of energy per unit of resource. Economically, using fossil fuels makes sense. Ecologically, when ocean acidification is taken into account, not so much. One of the major ways that environmental scientists explore and attempt to understand the natural world and the human impact on it is through the use of models. These models are often complex and nuanced because the natural world is complex. Each component of the natural world is both its own system and a smaller part within a much larger system. These individual systems cannot be separated from one another. Therefore, it is impossible to study them in isolation and get a clear and true picture of what is happening and what might happen in the future. Here, you see a model that attempts to understand how the various components of the natural world function together to impact climate. Make note of the fact that there are a variety of large and small scale components associated with this one subset of a much larger system. The interactions of these components, such as the water cycle, solar radiation, and atmospheric composition, are important because no single component can be identified as the main cause of or solution to an environmental question or problem. You must look at the system as a whole. Environmental models are often theoretical or predictive. This is because these systems are complex and ever-changing. It is difficult to take a snapshot of a system and be able to make completely accurate and functional conclusions about what may happen in the future. Therefore, relying on multiple points of data from a wide variety of sources, locations, and disciplines can provide a solid foundation of understanding the system and how predictive and explanatory models might look. Typically, these models seek to explain or predict the future behavior of the four major components of the environment, ecological, biological, atmospheric, hydrologic, or lithospheric components. Environmental science seeks to understand how these components interact with one another and how those interactions can help us to understand future interactions. Lastly, environmental models are as complex as the systems they attempt to describe. Often these models make use of historical and real-time data and the use of comparative modeling, 
or the co-opting of model types and components from other disciplines that may better explain the phenomenon at hand. The major way in which humans impact the environment is through the use of natural resources. We take up space, utilizing land for agriculture, recreation, and waste disposal. We use fresh water for drinking, bathing, cooking, and irrigation. We harvest timber and bamboo for building materials, and we mine for mineral and fuel resources. Everything we as a human society do has a direct or indirect impact on the overall environment. Here you see the best example of the way in which humans impact our world, the linear economy. This five-step process describes the rampant use and unuse of materials and resources. Extraction, production, and disposal often produce toxic chemicals and waste that cannot be broken down naturally. These chemicals and other waste products get into waterways and poison wildlife or even cause extreme health problems for us. It is important to understand that the linear economy is everywhere and there is no society or location or corporation that is exempt from this problem and the way of impacting our world. And for those concerned about environmental degradation, Save the Planet is a rallying cry that has been around since the first environmental movement of the 1960s. The idea is that by working to change the ways in which humans use resources and interact with all components of our natural world, we can then conserve and preserve nature and provincially reverse the damage caused by reckless human action. The sentiment is admirable, but it wholly misses the mark. Earth has existed for 4.6 billion years, life on the planet for 3.7 billion. There is no doubt that the Earth can function without us. Non-human life can function without us. In fact, in many ways, it would flourish without us. The existence of planet Earth is not dependent on humanity. However, humanity's existence is very much dependent upon planet Earth. Most would consider this reason enough to focus more on conservation and responsible use of resources. But unfortunately, that isn't the case. Linear economies, capitalism, focuses on increase in technology, these and many other things stand in the way of this idea. The more appropriate way to approach these problems is to look at it as saving our society. Because we cannot function without a healthy and productive planet, our society can and will crumble if direct and drastic action isn't taken to preserve and restore our natural world. The following slide provides you with an opportunity to see how some of these ideas are connected together. Feel free to pause the video and explore the connections between these topics. Then use the statements at the beginning to review.